In December of 2012, I went to Seattle to meet my four sisters, Lori, Colleen, Carrie, and Molly, where we saw a play. And in that play, there was a song entitled Stand. It ended with the last line, when you have done all you can, you just stand. It was at that moment, surrounded by the love of my sisters, I realized I could just stand. I was born the fourth of nine children, the oldest of the five girls. Every summer, the day after school let out, my mom would load us all into the station wagon with the pets and supplies and a bag of clothes, and we would head to Whidbey Island, to Max Walton Beach, to our summer cabin. My mom's attitude was, there were never enough kids. So the revolving door of our friends from the city coming up for long vacations at our beach place was always in motion. By 1979, after a few jobs in Seattle as a registered nurse, I applied for and was offered the position of the director of home health care of Whidbey Island. I gladly accepted and moved back to Whidbey and became the Keith kid who never came home from summer vacation. In 1980, I married, and in six short years, I had three wonderful boys with my husband, Peter. After the youngest was born, Killian, I decided I needed to think about a change of career. So I gave up my position as the home health care director, and I became mother of the brood of boys. I was badly outmanned, and I knew it. And I enlisted the help of my sisters, who were doting aunts and mother figures to my boys, to divide and conquer. That change of career brought years of a farm experience, where we raised chickens, pigs, milk goats, sheep, horses, and we made the rounds of the various 4-H clubs. We even took a, a brief stint in a clown 4-H club. <laughs> On the weekends, the testosterone level would double or triple. Their father and I became experts at the breakfast sandwich assembly line. And as the boys got older, the trade-off for the food was stacking firewood or unloading a couple of tons of hay. But no one left hungry. It was a fun and challenging life. We had the usual teenage problems, but by and large, we kept one foot in front of the other. I envisioned my boys as grown men bringing their families back to the farm to entertain them with stories of growing up there. But it wasn't meant to be. In the fall of 2010, our idyllic would be on life changed in a very unexpected and a very public way. My husband of 30 years resigned his law practice under investigation of misappropriating client funds. The years that followed were truly the darkest and most disorienting years of my life. I still cannot describe the grief and the shame that I felt through that period of time. Within months, I had lost my 30-year marriage. I had lost my beloved farmhouse, the only place my boys had ever known. But most challenging for me, I lost my sense of self. I didn't know the stranger in my mirror. I could not comprehend her life in any way. I prayed and I prayed that I would wake up and I would realize it was simply a bad nightmare. Articles in the local paper provoked mean-spirited and very misguided comments directed at my boys and I. A good day was simply finding the reason to get out of bed. And in those darkest and most spirit-numbing of times, it was my sisters and a few close friends who lifted me back to my feet. They would not take no for an answer. They made me stand. I began spending half of my time in Seattle to take care of my mother, who was diagnosed with an Alzheimer's dementia. And as odd as it may sound to you, the challenges of caring for an elderly parent with dementia, I found great comfort being there with her. There were times she thought I was her mother. There were times I was her long lost sister. And there were these precious times where I became Virginia, her best friend from third grade. In the foggy world of her deteriorating memory, 
I found a much needed escape from the foggy world of my collapsing life. In August of 2012, my mother, after battling the effects of her disease for several years, died peacefully in her sleep. Back on Woodby Island full time, I was in need of work. My dear friend Ruth encouraged me to call Elaine Michaelides, the owner of Art of Soil. I had never met Elaine, but I called her. To this rapid fire business like phone conversation, I answered, mm, Yes, I have gardening knowledge. Um, <laughs> yeah, yes, I have tools. Yes, I am very flexible. <laughs> Physical work, yes. <laughs> but the deal maker came when I asked her the question, did I tell you I drive a truck? <laughs> I started working for the Art of Soil the next day. For the past two and a half years, I have been blessed to be a part of the Art of Soil Sisters. They embraced me without hesitation or judgment. They supported me without enabling. They loved me for who I am, even when I felt totally unlovable. They nurtured my spirit with their wit and their intelligence. They shed tears with me. They felt my despair. They celebrated my joys and my triumphs and they imparted their wisdom and their life experience. I am so honored to have them in my life. I would like to introduce my soil sisters. Marta Mulholland, the voice. Marta serenades us throughout the day and wows us with her acting and her dancing ability and her kind and caring nature. Diana D. Shirley. She is dancing through life, literally, and she inspires all of us in the group with her strength and her bravery and her determination. Her artistry shows through in everything she does. Gina Simpson. <laughs> Poet and wordsmith, she loves nature, she loves music. Gina rhymes with Django Fest. <laughs> Suzanne Schlicky. The artist and the writer, her words can bring tears to your eyes, but comfort to your soul. Saint Suzanne, we call her. But there's enough sinner mixed in to keep you on your toes. <laughs> and finally, Elaine Michaelides, the driving force. The artist and the horticulturist extraordinaire. She would never ask us to do anything she wouldn't do herself. She's always creating. She's always on a quest. She's always challenging us to do our best. This is my sisterhood, my family sisters, my friend sisters, and my soil sisters. And I am surrounded and empowered and blessed to stand with these women. On December 11, 2012, after a two-year federal investigation in which my former husband completely cooperated, he was sentenced to 48 months in prison. I drove him to federal prison in hopes of finding some peace and to complete a journey that we had begun when we married in 1980. I am still searching for that peace, but getting closer. I feel what I did find in December of 2012 is the song Stand. When you've done all you can, you just stand. It is my family's personal anthem to this day. My boys, Brian, Patrick, and Killian, have stood shoulder to shoulder through the last five years. Brian, as a stand-up comedian and a radio show personality on 
Patrick stood boldly and asked the question, does size matter in, in his documentary? He is a writer and an actor in Los Angeles. And Killian, my youngest, stands firm in his work for human advocacy and human rights as he educates corporations about their social responsibility in the supply chain of their product. And too young to stand alone at eight years old, my cherished godson, Raylor, has taught us all what resilience truly is. It is in the most challenging of times that we learn our strengths and we learn what's important to us. I've learned to stand in strength with my boys and I have learned to cherish the importance of my sisterhood. And I thank you for letting me stand here and tell you my story.